How's it everybody? Josh here. The video you're about to watch is only made possible because of the generous contributions of our patrons. If this is content you enjoy and you want to see more of it, head on over to patreon.com slash command zone and you can help support the show. We're not asking for a lot. Even just $1 goes a really long way. All right, enough of that. On to the video. Hey guys, my name is Jimmy Wong. This is the second episode of Game Nights. I've returned, they invited me back, thank goodness, and it's gonna be a blast. Hey, my name is Alex Kessler. I am the co-host of the Masters of Modern podcast, uh, creator of games for Kess.co, my own toy company, and also a co-creator of Top Decking, which the person I just waved at that you won't be able to know is there, so I shouldn't do that the next time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Lee Kwai, co-host of the Command Zone podcast. Hey, I'm Craig Blanchett, and today I'm not playing any Infect decks. Are you saying you don't have any infect in any of your decks? I'm never saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Today I'm playing a partner combination. I'm playing Vile Smasher and Thrasios. Thracios, however you say it. I chose these guys because I just thought it'd be fun to just throw damage around randomly and see what happens. Usually I like to be more targeted with my stuff so that I can punish people when they make me angry. This is gonna be a little bit tougher. So I like going outside of my comfort zone and trying something new. So I'm playing Tana and Timna. The basic idea is I'm playing the Birthing Pod deck. Uh, it was banned in Modern, and since I'm a Modern Masters host, I figure I should play a Modern deck that I can't play anywhere else because the four color commanders let you play with all kind of the colors you need to make a Birthing Pod deck work. I'm playing a very aggressive deck called Shu Yun, the Silent Tempest. He's a commander that uh, has prowess, and when you cast a non-creature spell, you can pay extra mana to give any creature double strike until end of turn. So you can see a lot of sort of interesting unplayable EDH cards, in my opinion, in this deck, just to sort of pump Shu Yun up to the max and slice and dice someone with his fist until they're dead. Today, I'm playing one of my favorites. I'm playing Crush the Blood Braided. He gets a plus one, plus one counter for every creature that dies for their power. So this plays a lot of edict effects, things that make other people sack creatures, so he can get really big really quick. Alex and Craig both were two of the first people that I ever played Commander with, and so it's always great when this particular group of four people can get together, because it really feels like, you know, the first time that I played the format. Alex Kessler is much more of a Johnny when it comes to EDH. He likes to do cool combo based stuff, um, have a lot of synergies, sometimes dirtle around. I think we both have the philosophy of we like to win without using the combat step, which means we don't usually win by attacking people. Kessler likes to do a bunch of nothingness and then he always surprises me with how he wins. So Craig, you know, Craig is aggressive. Craig likes picking a person and he likes going after them. Interesting enough, Jimmy also, I think Jimmy learned the EDH world of fires from Craig and also likes just to kind of go after you. There's a reason his favorite color is red. He wants to burn people out, kill them quickly. Josh dirtles more. Josh is a little bit more on the, uh, I think the belief system of the Alex Kessler belief system of doing nothing and then eventually winning accidentally. Okay, so what what's up with the rings, I gotta ask. So the rings, okay. I've got my black mana symbol, okay, because I love black, and my Lannister ring. Because you love Lannisters? Because I love Lannisters, yeah. I, Tywin, or no, Tyrion. You said Tywin. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> yeah. All right, ready? Let's go. Game nights. You guys have just been, well, you were already knighted. You've been knighted. Welcome to game nights. Thank you, the only one way stands. <laughs> okay, forest. Oh boy. Landwar Elves. Okay, uh -oh. alright, all right, that's acceptable. I started out really good, so I, I turn one Landwar Elves, which is awesome. Hissing Quagmire. Gavity Township. Whoa, what happened to colored mana? I'm gonna play a mana ball. Ooh, mana ball. Good. So I go hey. Cheats. Uh, Exotic Orchard into Farseek. All you guys' plays were way more aggressive than mine. <laughs> not, not okay. Um, Sylvan Library, past turn. As we started, you know, everyone started just laying all of this stuff down and, and I was doing nothing. I literally played a Bounce Land turn two, had to discard a Wood Elves that everyone kind of was joking about me being a tricky person and putting it in there for later. Wood Elves. Of course he does. 
All right, he would have wanted to cast that. Because yeah. he'll get it back. <laughs> Which it was. <laughs> because I played Mana Vault turn one, I drew Soul Ring turn two. So I played Soul Ring, Vidalcan Orrery, and the Scroll Rack all in the same turn. And I felt great because if I didn't like my hand or the card I drew next turn, I could just Scroll Rack out another four. So essentially, I had the ability to look at eight total cards. I was feeling really confident going into turn three. Oh, that's a decent turn two. <laughs> On turn three, Lyle Smasher. Woo! I was able to get my key piece, my key general out. So everything was going according to plan. I drew into a rampant growth, which got out of mountain, which I needed. I played Timna the Weaver. I cast Timma really just to kind of start seeing cards. Like what she really does well is keeps my life total up because she has lifelink and then also lets me get to draw cards as the game goes on. And I originally kind of play her possibly just to sack her to birthing pod because I need birthing pod sack triggers. I will play a mystic gate and then I'll pass turn. We're gonna smash some vials. Cultivate. Nice. Man, you're ramping super hard too. So now with Vial Smasher out, I take the casting cost of my first spell each turn, in this case three, and then assign that much damage randomly to one of my opponents. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Jimmy. God darn it. I apologize. One, two, three. Jimmy takes three. I tap five mana to play my general, Crush the Blood Braided. The general's out. Pass turn. Probably means all our creatures are dying soon. Josh, I'm gonna attack you with Timna. Okay, take two commander. Yeesh. And then, then I will pay one life to draw a card. And then I shall play yeah. Solve Civil Chrome. Sad oh, robot, man. everybody. He's so and sad. Go find a land? Yep. End of turn, I'm gonna flash out my general. Chien! The Silent Tempest yep. has arrived. Nice. Play a land. And, oh, wait, I can go to combat now. Yeah, you can. Uh, swing at you, Josh, for three. Need some card draw. I'm already out of cards. Um, I sort of drew only the ramp section of my deck, and then unfortunately just couldn't do anything to capitalize on all the mana I had. That's it. Pass I, turn. I'm gonna play Jace. Chase for Prodigy, and that will trigger Vow Smasher. Yep. Craig. Cool. How much? Two. I take it. Okay, go ahead. All right, I right. untap. So I had gotten Sylvan Library out by like turn two. Then I was able to kind of pick and choose what I wanted to do. I wish I had a Sylvan Library. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I choose this one. Okay, you're checking that book out of the library? Yes. Uh, I'm so scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I pay one life to add one black. Uh -oh. Six mana. Craig played Massacre Worm. Oh. oh. Yeah. Everything gets negative two and Until end of lose turn? two life yes. for every creature that dies. In response, I'm gonna flash out a Metallurgic Summonings. So because of a Dalkin Orrery, I'm able to flash out a non-creature spell, which triggers prowess and pumps Shu Yun up to three toughness, so he barely survives the minus two, minus two. But then the Massacre Worm, well, basically massacres the whole board. Kills my land wilds, it kills my Jace. Kills my whole board and we take a bunch of life. But as funny as this sounds, that wasn't as bad as it could have been because Vile Smasher has three toughness, so he lived. And all the creatures got negative two, negative two, so they didn't actually have any power when they died. So Crush didn't get any counters. It really didn't help me that much. Pass turn. I will play the Revelark. Revelark, all right. I'm gonna untap, I'm gonna draw a card for the turn. I'm going to scroll rack right now for two. Something for a fetch land, a tutor, anything to really shuffle my deck so I could get rid of the lands I didn't want and replace them with actual spells. Cause at that point I wasn't worried about mana. I had all the mana I needed. Boy, I can't swing into anyone. It's really sad. Pass turn. Okay, I'm gonna chaos warp your massacre worm. No! When you chaos warp something, what happens is the person has to take that card, shuffle it into their deck, and then just flip the top card and if it's a permanent, it goes into play. So they just get a random card, and most of the time it's just a land. Flip it. Okay, flip. Land. Oh, oh no! He flips Avenger of Zendikar. What a, thanks Josh. So then he gets a whole bunch of plant tokens, and now it's like, I didn't even solve a problem, I created a new problem. Why, Josh? Yes. Why would you do this I, Well, I was trying to make what? it better. So that comes in, I get six tokens. All right, you get six 01 plants. Luckily, I have Volcanic Visions in my hand. I play two red and five for Volcanic Visions, targeting <laughs> Chaos Warp. So it does three damage to all creatures, not mine, and that kills all the plant tokens. It doesn't kill the Avengers of Zendikar, but the plant tokens are a big problem because every time he plays a land, they're gonna grow. So I figure now he's just, it's just, he's got a 5-5. Five five. It's not gonna be that bad. It also has the side benefit of taking out Shu Yun, Kresh, and Kessler's Revelark. 
And then, because Vile Smasher is still out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's seven damage to you, Jimmy. Oh, oh. All right, so my Revenant takes three damage. Triggers, and I get that sneaky Wood Elves I discarded for value too, on turn two. Yeah, yeah like Solemn. Uh -huh, and the Solemn, so I ramp all day long. And, and then, then sorry Jimmy, but you're the only guy I can attack. Fine. I take it. Take two. Next turn, I'm looking and I have Blade of Selves in my hand, and I'm like, yes. I'm true. gonna draw two extra cards. And take eight? Okay. Well, that seems bad. <laughs> I play Blade of Selves. Whoa. Blade of Selves means when he attacks with that creature, for each other player, he's gonna create a copy of that creature that's attacking. I equip Blade of Selves. So I'm gonna swing at whoever, whoever. And then because of Myriad, two more Avenger of Zendikars are gonna come in, creating 12 tokens. And then I'm gonna cast Goblin Bombardment. Oh! <laughs> So regardless of what happened, I could sack those for 12 more damage. This is awful. This is horrible. So I had done all this stuff. I was so happy. I'm like, yes, this is everything this deck's supposed to do. And then Jimmy took it all for me. Jimmy took everything. And- Hold on, I'm hold on. In response to you casting Goblin Bombardment, it's still on the stack. I'm yeah. going to flash in Treachery. So because of a Dalkin Orrery, I was able to cast Treachery at instant speed. And I'm gonna steal your Avenger. Oh. oh, yeah. Jimmy takes my Avenger of Zendikar with my Blade of Selves equipped to it. The way that equipment works is the equipment will actually stay with the creature until Craig can re-equip it to a new creature, but Craig's tapped out, so the blade's just gonna stay there. So now, if Kessler can't do anything, I have a full turn to go ham with my awesome Avenger of Zendikar. Yes! I'm gonna have a ton of zero one plan tokens. I'm gonna make them all bigger because I had a land in my hand. I pass turn. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna play uh, Liliana, Heretical Healer, which is the flip Liliana. Okay, okay. all right. This doesn't kill Avenger of Zendikar or get rid of a Blade of Selves. That's true. Okay, just thought you should know. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll lose two life. Playing Birthing Pod. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, 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 don't do this to me, Kessler. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> pay another two life to then search my deck so for- activate it. Sacrificing. Um, Solemn Simulacrum. So now you get to find a five drop. I'll get Sidisi. Sidisi will uh, exploit the Wood Elves, letting me get any spell I want, which will be Abrupt Decay. I'll Abrupt Decay the Blade of Selves. Oh, come abrupt on, decay. man. All right. uh, so Kessler has this monster term where he Abrupt Decays the Blade of Selves. I'm just left with a 5-5 five, five Avenger of Zendikar. So that threat is neutralized. What's the point of saving the table if this is all that happens? <laughs> hey, you still have a 5-5. Five, five. But uh-oh, Kessler is about to go off. Because what he just did was play like a sequence of like three cards to find the specific tar card to do something. So if he does that again next turn, he's gonna find the specific card to win. Everyone just cards the kite. What? Yeah, really on it. Really on it. What if my zombie token? <sighs> I needed that land so bad. <laughs> right, you pass turn? Yes. I'll swing it. Craig for five. I'll take it. I'll play Shuyin right. again and then I'll pass turn. Uh-oh, I'm in the teens. This is not good. All right, Karavec. Oh, All right. This is even worse. So every time anybody casts a spell, I just get to start aiming that much damage at stuff. And that will trigger Vile Smasher. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Craig, you take seven. I don't like that at all. <laughs> no, no, you definitely I don't I mean, like that one bit. <laughs> Vile Smasher like had my number for some reason. It kept hitting me, brought me down to 10. Go ahead, forget. I cast my General Crush the Blood Braided for the second time. So he cost two extra, so he cost seven. But his CMC is still only five, so Caravac's only gonna throw five damage, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I kill Liliana. Yeah. Pew pew! Because I only have one card, and Jimmy only has one card, and we don't want to lose him. Astro's Altar. Oh. Uh -huh. yep. uh, I get to throw merciless. three damage or something. Oh, God. Caravac is so good! Karabek is so Am I good. right, guys? Am I supposed to be most scared of uh, yeah. Kessler right you should, now? You should kill the zombie. I think I'm just gonna kill the zombie. Okay. I will cast Victimize. So Here you get to up. sacrifice one of your creatures and get two out of the graveyard, right? Yeah. Sack so, into DC. So DC gets sacked. That and has... Kresh gets... Plus four counters. And then Karabek deals three damage to Shu Yun. Oh, man. I should have flashed them out. I don't know what I was doing. Trigger, trigger, trigger. It's like trigger happy around here. So I cast Victimize, bringing back Revel Arc and Liliana, the Flip Planeswalker, and then sack the Revel Arc to Astronaut's Altar. Bringing back Solemn. What yep. else? Yep. I'll use Birthing Pod then on the Solemn, which then allows me to search through my deck for Karmic Guide. So now Kessler has this infinite loop going. 
He plays Karmic Guide. That brings back the Revel Arc. Then he sacrifices first the Karmic Guide to Astronaut's Altar, and then the Revel Arc. When the Revel Arc dies, it triggers, bringing back Solemn Simulacrum and Karmic Guide, which in turn brings back the Revel Arc. Now he can repeat this over and over, and each time it will trigger the Solemn Simulacrum, essentially putting all of his basic lands into play tapped and drawing as many cards as he feels like. Plus, he ends up with infinite colorless mana. How many uh, cards have you drawn so far, Tessa? 29. 29. Yeah, 229. And that, he could you drew 39. Time. You drew 39. Oh, you're right, 39. <laughs> I drew 39 cards so far. So I have infinite mana of color, the colorless variety, but I don't know if I can actually kill anyone. One, two, three. Kessler's four, just five, arbitrarily six, seven, taking eight, piles nine, of cards off his deck well, and saying, I'm 13, just gonna draw 14, this 15, many. 15, 15. I draw my whole deck, except for one card. We weren't sure if from that point he'd be able to win because he tapped his lands really weird, and so the only colored mana he had access to was either one green or one white mana. For a second, I didn't think I could win, and I drew my whole deck. I thought I was just gonna lose because I like didn't have the ability to kill anyone. What he ended up being able to do was he had Liliana, and because she's flipped onto a Planeswalker, I can now use her Planeswalker ability plus ability to discard a Murderous Red Cap, allowing me to bring it back with Revel Arc. You can then sack it infinitely and do infinite damage. So he just da -da -da, say hello to my little friend, and ba -ba 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 -ba, we're all gone. All right, All game right. one. Everyone simul dies. So it turned out I had the, the mana I needed. I was able to figure out the puzzle in front of me because of the cards I was able to play correctly earlier in the game, and I won the game, so champion. Uh, is there anything you're looking forward to in the next game? No, I hope the deck gets out to that fast start again. It's interesting, it's not my type of deck because I'm not able to sort of there's no repercussions to anybody. Like, I'm not able to be like, if you do this, I'll do this. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to hit you back. I don't know, because it's not up to me. It's up to Vile Smasher and his, like, spontaneous craziness. It's up to the dice. For game two, I'm going to play Geist of St. Traft. It's really a control deck. It takes advantage of the fact that he is so hard to kill, being a 2-2 with Hexproof, that allows me to play him early, let him be a threat, while I counter spells or kind of control what other people are doing. For game two, I'm going to play Damian. A lot of the deck is just ramp spells. So she lets you draw up to seven and then just dropping bombs. You know, green, black, blue bombs. I want vengeance. I'm playing Shu Yun again. And fists are going to be flying. <laughs> <laughs> We're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Top. Go. I kept a kind of sketchy hand, so I had like five lands of Sensei's Divining Top. I kept it because top is so good at allowing you to filter the top of your deck that I knew I could probably make it so I didn't have to draw a land for at least the first like five or six turns. Uh, Flood Strands, and then I will uh, fetch for Land Tax, getting Tundra. Ooh, Ooh. Land Tax. Turn one Land Tax. Luckily I'm not first, so Land Tax is a really good card. Start with Ancient <laughs> Tomb, top. I kept a sketchy opening hand, but I think I had a lot of reason to. My only land was an Ancient Tomb, but I also had Sensei's Top, so I could play it on turn one and activate it and be able to dig for more lands. Turn two, I used the top to make sure I didn't draw any more lands. And then I played a Birds of Paradise, so things were off to a really good start. Good. Uh, Flag Grove, pass turn. Land tax triggers. Yep. So land tax starts triggering, I start drawing Ancestral Visions every turn. I will play a Stoneforge Mystic. I cast Stoneforge Mystic, which lets me tutor for an equipment. I tutor for a Sword of Feast and Famine, which uh, when it does damage to a player, it lets me untap my lands. And I realize since I'm going to have so many lands, getting as much mana as possible is really important. I will play a Signet. Um, and then I'll, I'll pass turn. So I play Vile Smasher, and then I play Training Grounds. For Thrasios? Yeah. Because he only costs two then when yeah, you get it. Yeah. So I was able to get a Somberwald Sage out pretty quick. Somberwald Sage. Somberwald. Pass turn. Trigger. Oh my god. He okay. just drew three cards. Yeah. Pretty good. Ancient Tomb, Geist, Top. Geist comes into play on turn three. So I have kind of everything you kind of really need to start getting the game going. I'm in the top. Look at the top three. No lands. Ugh, this feels bad. Oh, no, no third land? Yeah, I'm trying to think if I want to. I'm gonna brainstorm. Yeah. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Still didn't find one? Yeah. I'm going to cast Thassa. Yeah. Play Thassa allows me to scry as well. I'm gonna be able to find more lands. Pass turn. So I cast Thrasios. Okay. Cool. Trigger with Vile Smasher. It's gonna do two damage to somebody. I'm gonna go two, one, two, three, four, five, six this game just to change it up. Cool. Jimmy. Great. 
I'm gonna play Thran Dynamo. He's got a lot of mana right there. Jeez. And then play Consecrated. Oh, oh, oh. oh, boy, oh boy. no. So my Consecrated Sphinx allowed me to like, from turn four, I'm drawing seven cards per turn. Put a piece of mana to play and equip. Yep. On the Geist. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, Josh, you're the only one I can't block. I'll swing at you, and then Jimmy just spread some love. I'll swing the angel at you. Kessler started swinging at me with Sword of Feast and Famine, so I was having to discard cards. He was untapping land. I'm gonna cast Sundial. At that point, I also get a Sundial the infinite. So the way Geist works is when he attacks, he makes a 4-4 angel that at the end of the attack step goes away. So what Sundial the infinite allows you to do by ending the turn is you get to keep the angel. So that's kind of a slow way to get an army of angels. Uh, I'm gonna top upkeep. This is awful. No lands in the Not top. A single land. Jimmy, unfortunately, was pretty stuck on land. Pass turn. I'm gonna activate Thrasios. I got Thrasios out with training grounds. It makes his ability only cost two, so I'm able to really start powering out lands and drawing cards. I will pass turn. So Consecrated Sphinx drew me into like everything I needed. Tooth and Nail Entwined. Yeah, let's go. Craig, because I'm tapped out, casts Tooth and Nail, which lets him search for two creatures from his deck and basically put them into play. Oh boy. So I choose Shieldred and Blightsteel. Shieldred's kind of an obvious choice because she's great against Geist because of the Hexproof and because I'm drawing so many cards that I'm able to discard some huge creatures to then with Shieldred's ability, get them back into play. And then Blight Steel is just one of those ones where it's like, it costs 12, so cheating it out just felt right. I'm going to use one more to put in Sword of Fireness. Oh no. I upkeep, I luckily still have the Stoneforge Mystic. I sack the Stoneforge Mystic to Shieldred, sack trigger. I will equip Sword of Feast and Famine to Geist. Okay. I will attack, God, I think I have to attack Josh. I don't know why you have to attack me. I can attack Jimmy, but Jimmy's You can attack Craig, too. No, he has a blocker that can block my guy. Are you talking about an angel, too? The angel is attacking uh, What's Jimmy. What's he gonna do if I attack him with Bite Steel? What? He has <laughs> one blue open, I'll give him that. He's just, yeah. Yeah. That's true, he needs a blocker, doesn't he? Uh, no, I, no. Take, I take six and I <laughs> discard right. a card. Luckily, both of my commanders, though they're low casting costs, both have three toughness, so he wasn't able to just kill them with the Sword of Fire and Ice because I think that would have actually that I would have been totally out of the game. I'm going to exile Blightsteel with Return to Dust. That's what he's gonna do. You asked a question, he had an answer. <laughs> and I'm going to end my turn. Cool. Go ahead. Keep the angel. All right, I'll play Reliquary Tower, very relevant right now. I will play Glenelendra. Oh, Jimmy, finally in the game. That is good. And I'll pass turn. So shield your trigger, I'll sack the Birds of Paradise. So I use the mana from the Dying Birds of Paradise to activate top. I find Curtain's Call, one of the new Undaunted cards. Um. Ah. I was trying to use it to get rid of Geist of St. Traft, but Geist is hexproof, so I can't actually point the Curtain's Call at it. <laughs> but Craig had Shieldred out, and Shieldred makes everybody sack a creature at the beginning of their upkeep. So if I could get Kessler down to only having the Geist, he'd be forced to sack that. But I couldn't actually use Curtain's Call to also get rid of Shieldred, which was kind of annoying, because I needed her around to get rid of the Geist of St. Traft. So I cast Curtain's Call. So I'm gonna go Angel and Consecrated Sphinx. But I know the Consecrated Sphinx is just gonna come back into play because of the Shieldred trigger that Craig has. If I have to get rid of that Geist, it's just making me discard cards and doing commander damage to me. I can't live through it for very long. And then, trigger on Vile Smasher, six damage. Sorry, Jimmy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I, what are you, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Sometimes you'll just take 10, 15 damage off a dice roll, maybe three times in a row. All right, I'd play Micaeus, Mana Crypt. Oh my gosh. Asceticism. <laughs> so all your stuff is hexproof? No, no. Okay. Shroud, right? Shroud. Shroud, yeah. And you can regenerate each creature for one in the green? Right. All right, so Craig officially went off. Yep. I swing at Josh for six. Why me? Because you have a swamp, right? Huh? You don't have a Kessler swamp, Kessler can't do you? block. Kessler's got nothing. I haven't done anything to Dude, you. I don't even at, understand. Uh, swing at the guy that's the most powerful. Or swing at Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what does the swamp have to do? Kessler block. has zero do blockers. No, I don't no, have a swamp. Doesn't. I don't think he can block. He can block. You should attack me. Kessler. See, look. I listen to reason. I pass him. Uh, all right. So in response to this and this and this and all that. So Josh kills my angel so that the Shieldred trigger will make me sacrifice my Geist. So I had to get tricky. I top, for the top three cards, there's a Snapcaster Mage. So I draw the Snapcaster Mage during my upkeep with top, 
cast it. Snapcaster Mage, targeting return to dust. And then that allows me to sack the Snapcaster Mage instead of my Geist to the Shield or Trigger. Draw for the turn. So return to dust is castable this entire turn now. Uh, I will swing Geist at Craig. Hey, I tried to help you, man. You hit me for six. He yeah. says I tried to help him. When, when exactly? <laughs> so this is great because now I've got Craig attacking Kessler and Kessler attacking Craig, and I'm able to stay alive through political machinations. I can't block. You discard a card. Oh, I yeah. untap. A I assist. draw a yeah. card. I'll do two to your Glalandra with the Sword of Fireness. Oh no. I will return to dust. Your asceticism. Ooh. And I will end my turn. Upkeep. <laughs> I'll sacrifice Glalandra. <laughs> She's gone forever. Play Dak Faden. Woo! I was hoping to maybe take the sort of the Feast and Famine from Kessler so I could swing at someone with it, but I didn't have any creatures because Shieldred just made me sack all my creatures constantly. All right, give me that Thrain Dynamo. <laughs> so I finally had some hope. If I could untap, I would have three extra mana, and that meant I could dig through time. That meant I could cast Vandal Blast. I could cast my General. I could do a ton of different stuff. And I passed her. Then I'm gonna... Oh, oh, oh. I Volcanic Visions back my Curtain's Call to my hand, which does six damage to everybody's creatures. But it doesn't really accomplish that much. The Geist has protection from red because of the Sword of Fire and Ice, and Craig has Micaeus, so most of his creatures just come back. Trigger with Vile Smasher? Jimmy. Yeah? I'm gonna let you roll it, because I don't want to hit you. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> How much damage? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. We're gonna use this dice next time. I don't know. Vow Smasher took probably like about 20 life off my life total. So Shieldred Trigger hit the Petrays, comes into play. Oh boy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> then tap seven for Cyclonic Rift overloaded. Oh. Ooh. So I'm back to turn zero. I didn't get to untap and have extra mana. Right. <sighs> That's a problem. Okay, who's at what? You could kill Jimmy with children right now. Jim, are you gonna help me? I will do everything in my power to help you, man. No, he won't. He'll he'll come back to help defeat you. Jimmy, are you gonna help of me? Of course! Craig! Oh, Alright. I swing at Josh. What? Oh! oh! <laughs> I can't even point damage at you. <laughs> what? Yeah, he's not. I have one. a I have a randomized damaging general, like what are the chances I can even kill you? I can't uh, even purposely do it. I feel like he's yeah, yeah, Alright, right, right, right. right. right, Josh takes so five. <laughs> that makes no sense. This is gorgeous. It's gonna be awesome when Kessler wins. I'm gonna point to this moment. No, I'm gonna call now. It's gonna be awesome when I win. <laughs> it's actually kind of possible. Okay, cast turn. All right, I will cast Wrath of God. All right, we did it. So I cast Wrath of God willy nilly into the the ether. Uh, hold on. Uh, we may have not done it. Feels kind of spell around. Desertion. Oh no. So Craig counters the Wrath of God. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I suppose I'll just play. Dak again, and then I'll try and steal your Thrand Dynamo, Craig. Um, After the you know handshake, it's kind of a little bit. Well. Oh, come yeah. on! Yeah. Well, someone's got to oh, Honor <laughs> among thieves. So now I have Curtain's Call back in my hand, and I've drawn in the meantime Expropriate. This crazy busted card from Conspiracy 2, it's nine mana. And so I just need to last long enough to cast that card. But Craig can basically kill me at any moment because he's got huge Eldrazi, Shieldred, Consecrated Sphinx. <laughs> Craig, are you gonna attack me again? No. Yeah, he is. No, I have a new target. Mm. Probably Alex, because he's all tapped out. Uh, I think it's Jimmy, because he stole you. <laughs> yeah, Dynamo. clearly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna trust, I'm gonna trust you. Call me four. I should. Call me Never four lands, trust Jimmy Craig. over here. I will not attack you. Stay I'm gonna play it. Rush me. Woo! Nice. Go ahead. Shielded trigger, and then. Oh boy. What's coming in? What's coming in? Mm -hmm. You should probably just bring the chaos in. Okay, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <sighs> I forgot about my case. So I play Curtain's Call, I have to, because he's gonna get Micaeus back out. I'm gonna kill Shieldred and then it that betrays. And then that will trigger Rush Me. So I flip the top card of my deck and if it's less than six, six. I can cast it. Oh, I get an extra turn after your turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I get super lucky and it's time warp. So I'm gonna get an extra turn after Craig's turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ele Did you say eleven? I think the most mana I've generated in this game is four. Still not a lot. <laughs> I want, yeah. Oh no, damn it, it's I only have 11. Enough. Oh no. <laughs> what did I do? The it's tragedy. 
So I didn't have enough mana to cast my Ulamog, plus cast Lightning Greaves. Okay, tricky stuff. Elvish, Elvish Piper. Piper. A little weenie 1-1 one, one who will tap to put a creature from your hand into play. Then... Lightning Greaves. Ah. Yep. Ah. I'm going to equip it, which means that I can use it the turn that I bring it into play. And then okay. I'm going to tap him to bring out Ulamog, the infinite guy. <laughs> All right. So I was able to swing that equipment from creature to creature to equip Lightning Greaves to Ulamog, which means that it's allowed to attack that turn. All right, I'm gonna swing five at Jimmy and Ulamog at Kessler. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, that's uh, that's them beats. That's the end of my career as a Magic the Gathering player. <laughs> Oh, it was a sad day. So I'm stuck there taking a giant Ulamog hit to the face. All right, Craig, you done? It's my yeah. turn. Oh, it's your turn. Put Domus Reach, which triggers Rush Me. So Caravac, but goes to my hand. It's too high CMC. Bell Smasher there. Thrasios there. Training Rounds there. Go ahead, guess what? I draw Path to Exile, but he has Lightning Greaves on his Ulamog. Yeah, okay, uh, go ahead. So when Kessler passes without doing anything, I'm a little wary of counter spells, but I have Expropriate and I made it to that nine mana. And Craig's board is so scary that I decide I can't wait. I just have to go for it. All right, I'm gonna tap nine. I'm gonna play Expropriate. Right. Oh! Uh, you guys gotta vote on whether I get one of your permanents or I get another turn. Have another turn, Josh. Take another turn. <laughs> I get two more turns? What? Are you guys insane? Trigger with File Smasher. So somebody's gonna take nine damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Break take nine. Nine. Oh, you might die, Craig. I know. And then that will trigger Rush Me. Mystic Tutor, I'll, I'm sure I'll cast it. I oh, fetch Time it's... Stretch. Oh! <laughs> From there I go, okay, take my first extra turn. And I cast Time Stretch. At this point, both Craig and Kessler are at 10 life, and Time Stretch is a 10 CMC spell, so. Even odd. So I die. <laughs> Smashed. Now I'm gonna go to my second extra turn. I never even saw another turn, which I thought I was going to see. And then I will cast Emrakul, the promised end for the bonus irony points. <laughs> Vile Smash for 13. Dead. Vile Smasher just took me out. Yeah, we smashed some vials. So the Thrasios and Vile Smasher deck it's pretty sweet, and the fact that it can just throw damage around randomly is fun. It takes it out of your hands. You don't feel guilty. Not that I ever do. Want to go in-depth on how the Vile Smasher deck works? Be sure to check out this week's episode of the Command Zone podcast, where we break it all down. So I'd much rather play a spell on my turn than a spell on Craig's turn than a spell on Jimmy's turn. Do as much damage as possible. Yeah, so... Vidalcan Orrery, Leyline of Anticipation. You also want instants in the deck uh, if possible. So just something to keep in mind.